Well, good day, Transplant Helper community. My name is Jim Murrow, and I thought we'd have a little bit of fun today, and I would go back and actually comment on some of the comments that have been beneath my videos. Now, let me say in the first onset of this, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who are constantly commenting beneath these videos, commenting over on Facebook, sending private messages, emails, text. I've even gotten a number of phone calls on my personal phone, which I have no problem with you doing that. But uh, people who respond to these videos, it means so much. It's so encouraging to me. It means so much to the community. And I promise you, uh, most all of you are so, so kind in doing that. As a matter of fact, I was kind of scratching my head thinking about this the other day. And I realized in the more than two years I've been making and producing these videos, 470 plus videos, I think I've received two, only two, really negative, mean comments. I just delete those things right off. Now, that's not to say there aren't some comments I have to delete. If someone, you know, randomly comments something that's unrelated to the video, I take that down. If someone uses vulgar language, I take all of those down. So I'm thankful that most of you don't do that or all of you I'm talking to now probably don't. But, I, I, you know, overall, I've never received only but those two comments that were kind of negative. And, and I didn't let that phase me a bit. That's part of being on YouTube. You're going to have to take the good with the bad and, and that sort of thing. But for me, it's just about all been good. And so many of you have been so kind, so encouraging. It's just been great. In addition to that, and this is so important to this community, I have found so, so, so many times lately that when I uh, have someone to comment on a video, maybe you did it, I don't know, but when one of you comments on the video, before I can get in my little uh, app to comment back, somebody's already commenting on the comments. So that means you as a community, all of you working together as the community, which is what this really should be and is, you're responding to one another. You're helping one another. You're encouraging one another. You're uplifting one another. You're giving advice. Uh, many times advice that to be honest with you, I didn't even think about or, you know, offering resources that I didn't know about. And so that is so great. So for those of you who comment below the videos, thank you for that. For those of you who comment below the comments and give great information like you do, that is unbelievably outstanding. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. But I thought it'd be a good thing today to read some of the comments that I've gotten recently on some of these videos. Some of them have a few questions in them. Some of them just share some scenarios, some situations that I think are just always good to share. So hopefully no one uh, will be offended because I'm going to read one of their comments and I'm going to be upfront with you. I'm not going to read the names with most of these comments, either for the fact that I can't pronounce the name, and that's that's on me, that's my fault. Or uh, a lot of you actually use a username that is not your name, and, and sometimes those things can be tricky to read, so I'm not going to try to do that. Now, if you've got a, a, a name that I can pronounce, at least I'm pretty confident in pronouncing I may make mention of that. So big, huge shout out to you. But just know I'm thankful for all these comments. Okay, so whatever said, uh, however it said, I'm thankful for that. And especially what you add to the community. That is what is so huge here. So I'm going to be looking down at my screen here in front of me for a minute, reading some of these. Please uh, forgive me. I am dyslexic, so I don't read well. So I may stumble around. I may just throw in the towel and not just stop reading if I can't get it across. But let me read the very first one here. And I can't pronounce this name. This is Bobby Grissom. And he actually said these words concerning my video about the five things I don't do uh, that I had the thumbnail there. You remember said, let's be honest. Here's what he said. He said, Jim, I truly enjoy your videos. You have been an inspiration to me and thousands of others here on YouTube. My parents are both severely uh, severely medicine dependent and my brother places their medicines in pill boxes which make it immensely easier for me and any other person to give them their medications. They have an 8 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. schedule which is followed by my brother and I. I don't know if this would help you out or not. Now, he's got more comment I'll come back to, but yes, definitely Bobby Grissom. I, I actually did a video a week or so ago about my best method for you know, for handling my medications. And I don't often use a pill box. I have in the past, I, I do on occasion, but I don't often use a pill box, but you're right. For the purpose of allowing that medication to be distributed to a person like your parents, maybe who might, you know, might forget, may do something a little wrong. And especially if you're a caregiver, those boxes, those pill boxes are wonderful, okay? As long as they're being stocked carefully, which I know you are, Bobby, and, and your brother, as long as they're being stocked carefully, 
It's absolutely great, and it gives them something to see every day, something to visualize. You know, this was morning, this is midday, this was afternoon. Their time's 8, 12, 6. But these are the times, these are the medications, they're in the slot in the box. And so you can not only know what to take, but you can look back in that box in the afternoon and say, okay, I didn't take that. There's a whole dose of medicine from 8 a.m. I didn't take. So wonderful. And again, especially for a caregiver, uh, someone who has to maybe come in on a, in a pinch and be a caregiver for a few hours. They themselves don't have to know the medications. They just have to know where the box is and, and have to be able to read a watch or a clock, you know, to see what time it is. So wonderful. Yes, uh, I do think overall pill boxes are probably the way to go for the majority. And in that type of situation, that's wonderful. Now, he goes on and adds something that I really, really am thankful for and I respect in what is the next paragraph. This one, Bobby, was several paragraphs long. The next paragraph says, the main thing you have to give yourself is the gift of forgiveness. Now, he says that based upon the videos about the things I don't do right, and it may have sounded a little bit negative, but he said, you gotta be able to forgive yourself. What I mean is just to say, I don't eat perfectly, oh well. Tomorrow is another day. Just give it another try and do better. I used to be so hard on myself, trying to be perfect, to never make a mistake, and all I ended up doing was making myself miserable. Now, I've been there, done that uh, for sure, Bobby. He adds to this, and this is the part I really love, uh, till one day I realized that God did not expect me to be perfect, and Jesus will forgive our sins where we fall short. And Bobby, I... I tell you what, I'm the, I believe the same thing. I know the same thing is true. God is there to forgive us. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's trying to bless us. He's trying to, you know, cover our sins. And, and he does that through his will that's in his word called the Bible. But Bobby, I appreciate that part of the comment because so many of us struggle every day, I think, to forgive ourselves or to be forgiving to someone when we really just need to look at the primary example of where forgiveness and the source of forgiveness is, and that's in God, and then be willing to do that, to forgive ourselves, to forgive others, to bounce back, to come back, and to be stronger every day. And, and then he goes home basically says, I'm several years behind you on the transplant process, but one day I may either need a transplant or a VAD pump. Uh, as a destination to transplant. So Bobby, best of wishes. Most most of my prayers go out to you. Um, I know you'll do well, whatever the future holds in your journey. Hopefully it'll be something that'll be way off in the future. If not, uh, you're a survivor and I appreciate you already taking time to watch some of these videos and to get to know the transplant community. And you've been a huge encouragement here with your comment. And uh, yeah, that's one of the comments I chose to pin. So it'll be seen closer to the top. And so hopefully, you know, many will read your comment and it'll be great. So Bobby Grissom, thank you, thank you. Humongous uh, shout out to you for putting up such a kind comment. So here we're gonna scroll down just a little bit. And I responded to that already, but here we go. Uh, the next one here, I'll be honest with you, I don't, uh, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce your name. It's uh, S-A-C-H-I is the first part of that, S-A-C-H-I. So whatever that would spell. My apologies for that. But this person says, I'm currently on dialysis, waiting for a kidney. And from what I've been told, if your Medicare is due to ESRD, which is end-stage renal disease, I'll mention that in a moment, then you will only have 36 months or three years after that kidney transplant to stay on that insurance. It would be nice if they offered free lifetime insurance to organ transplants too, but I think offering free lifetime insurance to the donor, to the organ donors is monumental and a step forward in itself. I'm very happy to hear this news. Now, he's commenting on my video again a week or so ago that was free insurance for kidney donors for life. And during that video, we made mention of the fact that there's a bill that's being put into New York. I don't know if it'll pass can't be sure, but a bill that's been introduced in the state of New York, which would allow whoever is willing to donate a kidney to be able to get free health coverage for their life, for the rest of their life, premium free health care coverage. And uh, I made a comment during the video that that is wonderful and great. It will definitely help to motivate maybe some donors that are on the edge. But I think if we could give the same coverage to the transplant recipient, I think that would be wonderful. And, and what he's talking about here, if you're not familiar with this, if you are a part of the Medicare's ESRD, that's End Stage Renal Disease uh, Group or whatever that is, um, if you're a part of that, what they do for you is they guarantee you that if you're waiting for kidney transplant, if you're in renal failure, 
you are out loud to automatically have Medicare coverage insurance. Doesn't always include disability, although it can, but you always immediately can get access to Medicare, which can be a lifesaver. Many of these patients don't have medical coverage, whether they can afford it or whether they've ever had access to it. I know back in the day, uh, this would have been a pre-existing condition, making it nearly impossible to have insurance. But anyway, you can get a hold of Medicare. But the thing is, when they give that Medicare out to you, they basically give you a three-year uh, time time frame in which you can find that kidney, receive the kidney, and, and, and get through the process before that Medicare insurance could potentially end. Now, I went ahead and answered uh, this person last night on this, but I do want to share with you that, yes, that is true. There's that three-year window that is built in, installed to end-stage renal failure recip you know, disease uh, patients. There is that built-in three-year period. However, don't be mistaken. That doesn't mean that exactly to the day, three years post-transplant, you're going to lose your Medicare insurance. It doesn't have to be that way. If your doctor deems that for whatever reason that needs to continue, maybe there have been some issues, maybe there have been some problems, some complications, they could absolutely you know, write a letter to, to the Medicare program and, and extend that. That can be extended, okay? So don't worry about that. That can be extended. And it could be for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes it's not even related to the patient themselves. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing badly that you keep this insurance. It could be the fact that they just decide, the doctor looks at your overall um, life, you know, everything that's going on with you health-wise, emotionally, physically, and wads all that together and, you know, puts it in a package and says, because of all these circumstances in their life, this should be extended. So there's a very good possibility you could get that to go out past that original three-year uh, mark. So you can definitely do that. In addition to that, sometimes, and I don't know the, the age of uh, your age or anything, uh, the person who's commenting here, but sometimes age is a factor in that. You know, if you get a kidney transplant and you're 20 years old, there's a pretty good likelihood you could end up going back in the workforce and recovering pretty well. And, you know, I'm not saying life will ever be perfect because it won't. A transplant is a treatment, not a cure. But you could go back in the workforce, have many, many years to go on. If you've got a person who, say, is 65 years old or, or you know, somewhere in that range, and they get a kidney transplant, and then there's the three year of insurance and recovery and ups and downs and bouncing up and back and forth, you know, they may not be employable by the end of this. And so Medicare will take that in consideration. Your doctors can help to make them take that into consideration that maybe you're not as employable as you once were. And I know many people work on in their 70s, their 80s. I know a lady right now, she's 98, and she still cleans houses for a living. <laughs> wow, she's impressive. But you know, the majority of people are considering uh, slowing down and retiring, maybe going part-time or going into business for themselves at that 65, 70-ish age, and you're just not that employable. Uh, most employers, when you go in, if you're at that age, a lot of them will kind of, if they don't have a specifically, you know, um, position for someone with your capability or, or whatever, they may turn you away. And that's so unfortunate because we need that work. We need the income, but it just happens. Sometimes that you can call it discrimination if you want to happens. Uh, but, but let me assure you that you can potentially, doesn't mean you will, but you can potentially extend that three-year period. So it's not really a huge issue of panic. It is an issue that will require you sitting down, having a discussion with your doctor and hoping that they will give you uh, some recommendations that will help to keep you going. Otherwise, there are other ways of getting health insurance outside of Medicare. I do know Medicare is a good solution. I have it, but there are other solutions available sometimes that are not that high cost. The risk pool uh, type situations, we, we call it uh, the Obamacare, um, Affordable Health Care Act, which a lot of people get upset when you use those words. But uh, for someone whose income is low enough, the Affordable Health Care Act is actually affordable. I've been there, done that as well. Uh, but anyway, no, that's it. That's enough for that uh, comment, commenting back on the comment. So let's scroll down and see what we have. Uh, very next comment, uh, Isabel, and uh, I'm sorry, Isabel, uh, I don't always say your last name right, so I'm going to leave you alone today, but she is a huge uh, viewer of the program, someone who's constantly commenting on the videos, motivating other people. She's one of those that comments below comments for I get to comment. 
if that made any sense. But let me read uh, some or all of her comment right here because this is on the We Just Need to Be Honest Five Things I Don't Do video. She said, firstly, I think that you're a little too hard on yourself. You're not a robot. Now, I'm certainly not a robot, and I wasn't trying to be hard on myself, but I did want to share. Um, do you, uh, you say, hold on, I'm sorry. You do so much more than many people. You take care of five children. You have thousands of people who watch every video you post. Plus, it is November, and November is not the easiest of months. Yeah, November is kind of one of those slowdown months, especially when you've got any kind of depressive type things. But it's a slowdown month. We are all here uh, trying to do our best to help others, and we've learned through our journeys, especially in regards to transplant. We are here. We all seem to share the urge to give back post-transplant or post-graph. We are being human beings after all. We're not made uh, to be functioning in a straight line without a, ab with absolute perfection. You see my dyslexia is coming out. <laughs> if we try our best uh, to do most with the time that we have, we'll, we'll, we will make mistakes along the way, but we will be more successful because we've been more authentic and relatable. Uh, she says, I just finished up writing a book about my transplant experience and I've, I've heard you tell about that before. I'm looking forward to getting a hold of that in the future and not only reading it, but sharing it. Um, she said, I just finished up my book. I, it was designed and I have designed and implemented two projects with major transplant centers. I've lobbied and worked on the reversal of the current organ donation system. I've given presentations. I've created a Facebook page, which I'm a follower of, um, for transplant patients. And yet some days I still feel like I haven't done enough. Strangely, those days tend to be uh, that I don't feel well physically either. So let's just keep on doing our best, but let's have the wisdom to accept our limits and to take time to gather the strength that we need. And then she adds, never forget you're an inspiration to so many people. I've been privileged enough to find your sound advice on the channel uh, before and after transplant. Thank you for that and never give up indeed. And Isabel, you all just heard the comment. Wow. I mean, you're talking about a person here in Isabel that gives back, gives back, gives back. And I've been so impressed with some of the things she's been able to accomplish because she's just one of those people. You are just one of those people. A shout out to you who, you know, you do give back and you give back because of your love and your appreciation for your gift as well as your concern for fellow man. So tremendous opportunities you've made available. And again, your book, I look forward to maybe getting my hands on it somehow. If you want to send me one or tell me where I can purchase whatever comes up. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to reading that and just sharing your story. There's already been a few different people I'm associated with. Um, Lynn Robitaille is one of those people. Uh, Allie Barton is one of those. There are several more who've written books, memoirs, uh, about their journey and I've read them and I've given them away here on the program before and helped others to find them. Man, this is great, great material. So I look forward to getting in contact with you and to continuing to see the wonderful work that you do. But excellent comment right here. I know it sounded like I was blowing my own horn. Maybe I'm patting myself on the back. Thanks for helping me pat, but not really. Uh, these comments inspire other people. These comments show other people what transplant is about and what life should be about in the end okay so we got another one up here this is uh based on the same video five things i don't do let's be honest danny white and danny white uh, i i see your comments a lot appreciate you for that brother uh here's what it says he said jim first of all that ball game made us bama fans eat and he's talking about in the video where i mentioned that i watched the lsu alabama game the game of the century in in college football and uh, I ate a ton of cheese dip. Oh, boy, we ate a lot of food. I ate a lot of cheese dip. I probably shouldn't eat. ate. Um, I need to get that out of the house today, by the way, so I don't keep being tempted. But anyway, he said that game made us all us Bama fans eat a lot. Dep a depressive, sad, angry eat, laugh out loud. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I know the feeling of being reclusive. I don't want to get up, uh, but then I don't want to go to bed. Same thing. I've adopted a new dog that has incontinence issues this is kind of a uh, funny but I, i'm i'm feeling for you that has incontinence issues which was really uh, helped me because she has to go every few hours it makes me kind of angry sometimes but at the same time it makes me have to get up and walk her out the door or whatever and 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 be with her otherwise i would just lay around he says 
Uh, I went from probably a thousand steps a day to now five to ten thousand steps a day. I'm saying he's saying just because of the dog. Uh, plus, it makes you feel better when you get up and down. Yes, it does, Danny. It certainly does. Um, uh, I've got a feature on. I've got an Apple Watch, one of the older ones. So I've had it for a bit, but I've got an Apple Watch and it's got a feature called Stand, where it reminds you to stand up. And I hate that. I honestly hate it. But yeah, it makes me move. It makes me go. And uh, so, like, yeah, like your dog does, uh, it can really help. So he says, much better when we get up and down. And with, uh, hold on here. And with her, I can't put it off or tell myself I'll do it later. Uh, she's really been a blessing. Yes, and I agree with you. I'm a dog lover, a pet lover. Um, my son has fish, which I don't have to take out, obviously. But, <laughs> you know, these the animals can be comforting. They can be, you know, good for us. Now, we got to be cautious about what types we have. Okay, if you've not seen my pet video, I'll probably link it up here. But we got to be cautious. But, yeah, great companions, uh, great help to us. Uh, I will do all I can to give you motivation that I think we all can use. Danny White, thank you so much for that. I appreciate your encouragement. Again, I see your comments beneath a lot of these videos, so I'm just excited that you were able to comment again on this video. Now, Denise uh, Redeker, and I probably say your name wrong, but Denise, you're always there. Denise Redeker comments on the same video, Five Things I Don't Do Right, Let's Be Honest, and she says, you got this. Me too. I am pretty good about exercising. I go to a gym several times a week and try to get out for a hike as often as I can. Sugar is my biggest challenge. I figure that, girl. Uh, sugar is my biggest challenge, and I'm busy. Uh, I'm busy, but connection. I may be misreading something there. I'm busy, but... Hmm, my bad. Uh, but anyway, she goes on to say, uh, she talks about sleep. She said, I can fall asleep. When I wake up two or three times a night, typically medicines, uh, I wake up two or three times a night, uh, typically. So she's saying she has sleep issues. Medics, meds are absolutely, I'm absolutely vigilant about. I have PTSD about that. I have alarms that go off with me. Uh, mm, hold on. I'm dyslexic. Let me remind you. I have alarms that go off and it's, for me or anyone to remind me, it is, and I like this, I love this, it is drug o'clock. I never give up. And so, Denise, I get it. And I've heard you make that comment before about drug o'clock. Yeah, that's that's what our alarm should be called. <laughs> I don't know what we name our alarms if we set those, but yeah, it's drug o'clock. No matter what time it is, 9, 3, and 9 for me, it's drug o'clock. So thank you so much for your encouragement. I'm sorry you're having sleep issues and such. Um, I'm sorry that you're like I am and sugar's gotten rough. I, I think I told you in the comment, uh, I didn't used to even like sweets, but now I could do a cookie any day, anytime, unfortunately. But yeah, we all have our issues. We don't worry too much about it. We do our best and we keep on going. But Nice, thank you so much for that comment. A huge shout out to you. Uh, let's see. Um, Josephine, I'm not going to say the last name, but Josephine, says here, um, I feel like you're talking about me. I don't give up either. Thank God. Let's do better. So yeah, let's do better. Let's be a team. Let's be a community like we already are. And Josephine, you're a part of that. And let's do better together. And, uh, you know, I wasn't talking about you, but I know I'm talking about us. <laughs> and so I get that. Uh, I understand. So I've been there, done that. Been there doing that, as a matter of fact. But thank you so much for your comment now we've got one right here dusty vicky Rhodes. um i actually know a guy named dusty Rhodes, but i think you're a different dusty Rhodes. but i know you from here love this comment he says wow i could have written a script on these things i don't do well laugh out loud 25 let me do how you do that 25 do i have that backwards 25 25 uh, year post heart transplant the important thing is that we keep doing better and like you said don't give up that's right dusty vicky Rhodes. uh i'm i'm the same way i'm not 25 years out i hope to be one day i'm trying to i'm not i almost said i'm trying to catch up to you i don't want to catch up to you i want you to keep running you stay ahead <laughs> keep going but i'm trying to get to where you are um i'm about six and a half i keep saying six and a half it's more like six years nine months post uh, right now but i'm doing very well and i hope to meet some of those future 
uh, goals, to keep that calendar turning. That's what I want. I want the calendar to keep turning, the clock to keep twisting. And I'm congratulations on 25 years, and thank you so much for the comment. Now, the next comment right here comes from Linda Jar. Linda, Linda, Linda. Linda, you are always beneath these videos. You're a tremendous help. Linda is one of the primary people. Look at me. Linda is one of the primary people who comments below the comments before I can comment, which is wonderful. She is an encouragement to me and so many others. And let's see, let me expand her comment out here. Here's what she said. I, I pinned her comment also. Diet is difficult for me uh, because of gastro gastrophesis. I should be able to read that better. Gastritis or, you know, gastro problems. A low carb is my preferred way to eat of eating and when I felt my best after transplant, but now it's difficult because to digest a meal, I cannot eat raw fruit or vegetables, which is something we probably would be better if we could. Sorry, you're not able to. It's frustrating because I ate low carb for years and now a mashed potato is a go-to meal for me. Yeah, I like mashed potatoes, but probably not every day and probably not every meal. Uh, I can't even handle my favorite vegetable, Brussels sprouts anymore. I'm going to try lentils again uh, but I pretty much need to eat like a toddler. And I understand the eating like a toddler thing here. She goes on and says, um, I do well with exercise. I try yoga two to three days a week. Same with cardio. I like the balance. I try to sign up for a class and make my friends and, and make friends. And you will look forward to seeing them each week. Now, stop right there. We'll stop on Linda's comment right there. That's a good place. That's a good point. Um, when we're having trouble struggles, uh, trouble keeping up a consistent exercise program, the key to being able to do that is having a support system. So joining a group, whether it's you know yoga, cardio, joining a gym, cardiac rehab, I had a whole video about that a few weeks ago. One of the biggest motivators to that is having someone there with you. And you know being able to go to that gym or whatever, wherever that is, every day and to see the same people and have mailed a friendship. And you know then, then you come in one day and someone says, I missed you yesterday, where were you at? And so there's some accountability there and you know you get to be friends that is great and that's probably the key to keeping a consistent exercise program if you're going to do it in a group is the community that you build from that group and being able to keep on doing it because of that group so yeah excellent idea i just want to stop and pause and say about that she says uh socially i'm okay for it uh for instance i have 7 p.m dinner plans on friday supper is late for me with the guest I should really say that word right, but I can't right now. Um, I could be sick that day more than likely for eating out. I started sleeping better after a neurologist gave me Topamax for migraines. Now I sleep through the night and haven't done that since I first got uh, since I done that since I first got since 2015. Uh, since she was first transplanted, I guess. Um, but I've done the Topamax thing before I commented to you last night about this. I've done the Topamax before for my migraines. Um, it would definitely knock me out. The problem is it would keep me out. I couldn't get up the next day. The Ambien I'm on, I'm able to get up and move. So it's not good. Ambien's not good. But the Topamax, probably a little worse on me personally, just the way I took the medicine. But the good thing is I manage my migraines mostly now with my diet and some consistency in my diet and uh, I'm not having them as much. So I don't really have to take the daily migraine medicine anymore. I keep Imitrex in my pocket if I need it. And uh, yeah, I can just pop that pill where I've actually got a few nasal sprays that kind of will, for the most part, knock a migraine out. Uh, I ain't got time for one. But uh, yeah, that helps. She goes on and says, I pour my meds out weekly. I don't know how to manage it without a pill case. Whew. Uh, she says, whew. Uh, even if I set five alarms to remind me throughout the day, the arm, only alarm I don't have is bedtime because like you, it's different times. I'm struggling with memory issues. I'm not sure if I support a transplant or because I'm the oldest I've ever been, <laughs> but it is frustrating. Yeah, I have memory issues. I've talked to you before several times on the program here, all of you, about brain fog and uh, pump heads, sometimes people call it. I've, my mind is not what it was 10 years ago. It was not what it was before transplant, for sure. Some of that's heart failure. Some of that's age. I am the oldest I've ever been as well, Linda. Uh, some of that is the surgery itself, the whole process. I don't know, but uh, it does help. But he, she says here, that don't say that my friend is ugly. 
uh, or has weird eyes. I'm mad at you for saying that. I joked at the end of the video, said, don't look at this ugly face. And Linda, you took up for me. Thank you for that. Uh, but anyway, she said it's cold here too. They're having snowflakes. I don't hope we don't get many snowflakes yet. Usually it snows in Alabama in February or March, which is strange for some of you, but we'll be cold, but we don't actually get snow till about February or March. So maybe that'll hold off. Although we do enjoy white Christmases when they come. Another one here, and I know we got to stop. We're at 30 minutes. Are you tired yet? I'm about tired. Um, but I'm thankful that you're still here. Another one here from Jason Merlinbach, and I probably said that wrong, but Jason, you're always a tremendous encourager beneath these videos. He says, some snow last night here in St. Louis. Uh, not a cold person at all. A uh, real bad choice in diet. Also, pizza is my weakness. My weakness is pizza. Yeah, I love pizza. You put pizza in front of me, I don't care. I'm going to eat it. Uh, laziness is another. You're not lazy. Come on. Uh, but I actually got bad during the last few years from transplant. Still in a rut right now. I'm going through some family issues, which who doesn't have family issues? But I'm, I'm sorry for whatever you're having to endure there. Family life's tough. It's tough anytime. Uh, and especially post-transplant for some reason. So now I'm dealing with some stress uh, really makes me emotional eater. Unfortunately, this has led me to gaining 27 pounds. Pray for us all. I believe that this may be my call to action to keep leaning on my exercise because they are my hindrance. Uh, the problems aren't going anywhere. I'm just adding to them with my health being a victim. Jason, you know, I feel you. I really feel you. I know how. I know something about what you're going through. Um, the family issues, one. Um, the the eating. I've I've been blessed, if you want to call it that, lucky, whatever. I haven't gained weight post transplant. That's surprising. I've actually lost weight post transplant, but I was full of fluid pre, so I kind of lost all the fluid. And I've been in a holding pattern, 186 pounds and six foot one ever since, which is supposedly about ideal weight. But I haven't had the weight issues, but I do have the issues where I do change shape. <laughs> you know, my belly and it's not what I want it to be. The arms are not, you know, there's no muscle here anymore. Uh, that's really, but you know, a little bit here, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I, I know the deal with that. And maybe this is your call to action. It's certainly my call to action. If you guys want to do better, Jason, if you want to do better, Let's do better together. Let's keep moving forward. Let's do absolutely great, okay? And then there was a comment that fell beneath Jason's that I almost overlooked. Uh, no yo, no yo, Supra. See, I tell you, sometimes these aren't real names. They're just things. And I think he's got a old Honda Supra in his little profile picture here, which love my Hondas. Uh, Toyota, my bad. I've owned 17 Toyotas in my life. I've actually owned one Honda. I've got a Honda right now. Toyota Super, my bad. But great, great cars of the days gone by. Uh, I understand they're bringing that back, by the way. Uh, no yo, no yo, Supra. Uh, I guess you're aware of that. He said, I tried to stay active, but I'm on blood thinners. So I have bleeding issues through my nose. I saw I'm a little bit leery of exercising hard because that has caused me to gain a... Uh, hold on. Dyslexic. I'm a little bit leery of exercising too hard because of nose bleeds, which has caused me to gain a few pounds of weight back. I can't keep doing this. I try. I'm trying my best to remember to keep clean the program uh, and get a good night's sleep to take my medications properly. I'm on a, I'm on a transplant. I am pre-transplant, waiting on an LVAD, so I always try to exercise properly and have a good frame of mind so I could try to do to go down the straight and narrow path this is not his comment folks this is all of your comments are wonderfully written my my mind doesn't read wonderfully um anyway skip down here doctors tell me that when i first got sick he knew i was going on a he told me i was going on a spiritual and medical journey i like watching your youtube channel it keeps my hope up keeps me preserving uh thank you you for this channel keep up the good work you can do it and again no yo no yo supra i remember when you first subscribed it sent me a notification i was excited about it and you shared with me then some of your journey um you know i'm excited for the potential that you have ahead maybe the lvad the transition you know to transplant uh take the journey slow enjoy it for whatever joy is in it and then just know that things will get better they will get easier transplant is a wonderful wonderful thing to be a part of and so i look forward to continuing 
to hear about your progress and I'm praying for you even now just keep on keeping on now Tom Waller this will be the last comment turns out all of these were pretty much about the same video with the exception of the one about the uh, uh, lifetime kidney insurance Tom Waller says I could surely get I could surely get out of my recliner and exercise more unfortunately I'm content not to do that I have a sergeant wife uh, I think that's what you said sergeant is that the word I have a Sir, hold on. I'm questioning my reading ability for sure now. I have a sergeant wife, and my drugs are taken at the appointed time. Thanks, Penny. Keep on keeping on people. Okay. I hope I didn't misread that too bad, Tom. But I get what you're saying. A wife, a spouse, a caregiver, uh, a best friend, a loved one, whoever it is. Whoever can help us and assist us and keep us on the straight and narrow and, you know, give us our medication on time every time the right way, keep us going to the appointments, keep us up and exercising, keeping us doing something, they're great. I sometimes joke with my wife. Um, she works outside the home. I'm home most of the day because I'm on disability. I'm kind of retired. Um, I have plenty to do around here, but I don't get out of the house as much. And I, I joke sometimes because if she comes in the house, even though she's been working 12 hours, if she comes in the house and sees something that needs straightening or moving around, it doesn't take very long. And we're all up cleaning the house. You know, I'm in the bathroom scrubbing the toilet or something. Uh, but that's wonderful. She's great. She keeps a very nice home for us. Uh, and I, I get to do some of that, but she keeps it. She's really, she's awesome. Okay, my wife Jennifer is awesome. So just like uh, your wife here, um, Penny, huge thanks to you for supporting Tom during his transplant journey. So thank you so much, folks. This video has gone on now to 36 minutes. I think this will be my longest video ever, but I've enjoyed reading your comments. And so let me remind you, I comment below your comments. I respond to comments, okay? So if you've got an idea for the program, if you've got a question you'd like to have answered, if you want to share with this community your journey, your story, I would love to be a part of any of that. I would love for our entire community to be able to take part in your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience. Share with us what you know and the motivation that you can give and keep on supporting Oregon uh, organ awareness okay just keep striving because every time we can convince someone to be a registered organ owner is a potential to save another person's life that could join in our small but yet important community thank you so much for joining me today i know few of you have watched to the end of this video but if you have comment below and let me know you watched to the end uh, you'll be a superhero for that and who knows i may send you a little something in exchange for doing that. But thank you so much for watching the video. I apologize for it going long, but this has been a lot of fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, each and every one of you, please stay stronger, friends.